This area to watch in the Atlantic is set to become Hurricane Aaron faster than expected. This comes as the future hurricane will be on a path towards the United States into next week. There are many model scenarios on what could happen beyond that point, and this video will break down all of the newest info that you need to see. One Nation Web. As I record this video on Sunday evening, we're already looking at an impressive satellite picture with what is currently designated as Invest 97L, an area to watch according to the National Hurricane Center. This thing is expected to continue moving west through that red zone on the screen. In fact, let's talk in more detail about some of the risk upgrades in the official development forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Here's a look at that forecast, which now shows a 50% chance of tropical development within the two-day risk period. That is an upgrade from yesterday. The National Hurricane Center is now saying that there is a 50-50 shot. We see a tropical depression or something stronger within the next 48 hours. If it doesn't happen by then, we will likely see tropical depression or tropical storm status out of this thing within the next three to seven days. There is a 90% chance of that as the storm will be making its way just northeast of the Caribbean by the end of the week and into the weekend. Once this thing became designated Invest 97L within the last couple of days, that's when we started getting model intensity guidance coming in. Here's a look at some of the latest guidance on intensity from tropicaltidbits.com and the associated models. You can see that as we go through the next 0 to 48 hours, which I've marked as Sunday through Tuesday, some guidance keeps this below the tropical storm line, which is in the green shaded color there. However, we get a few models already getting this thing to where it would become named Tropical Storm Aaron after being a quick depression making its way through the main development region of the Atlantic. A lot more models show this storm being a tropical storm at least by Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. By the time we get to the end of the five to seven day range where that red zone is highlighted from the National Hurricane Center, all models are pretty much showing at least a tropical storm status out of what will likely be Aaron. Many models are showing this thing already being a hurricane by the end of the weekend into the weekend. This is one reason I think that the National Hurricane Center has turned their development risk zone from orange to red. To rehash the points I've already made about the early to mid part of the storm's lifespan, let's take a look at the future radar over the Atlantic Basin according to the European High Resolution Model. You can see that we're looking at our invest turning to possibly a depression or a storm as the European model shows some form or fashion of a loosely organized low pressure system making its way about halfway past Africa to the eastern part of the Caribbean around Tuesday afternoon. As of this point in time, it looks like the storm is on a westward trajectory, but with time, we're going to see a little bit of a curl towards the northwest. That is going to result in whatever this is being a little bit northeast of the Caribbean in terms of an ocean perspective. By the time we get to the end of this week, that means several hundred miles off of the Antilles there and our Windward and Leeward Islands. You can see that the European model is indicating a 1,001 millibar low. That's probably a stronger end tropical storm where you could see maybe 50, 60, 70 mile per hour sustained winds at the minimum. Again, though, there's some guidance already showing this storm being a hurricane by the end of the week. No matter how you slice it, this European model picture certainly does a good job of showing the general box area where this storm should be at the end of the week. It also highlights that the storm should be strengthening by then. With that being said, let's now take a closer look at forecast uncertainties, plus the USA impact potential and scenarios regarding that. Let's take a look at this Weather Bell graphic to dive deeper into that. By the way, you can access Weather Bell maps just like the one on screen here by clicking the free trial link down in the description of this video. Back to the point though, we're looking at low pressure zones according to the European Ensemble members. A European Ensemble system is a collection of basically various individual models. Think of the European model, but 50 of those. That's what we're looking at here, except every individual model that goes into this full ensemble system, if it shows a low pressure plot, that's going to be on the screen. So you see that small area there, that small area there, those are all individual model plots, and they're exact positions that they're showing any given low pressure system being at at any given time into the future. In this case, we're looking for all the plots regarding our future tropical storm and hurricane. You can see the green thing that indicates lower pressure as these plots show a strengthening storm somewhere just northeast of the Caribbean by the time we get towards this weekend. That's where we have pretty good certainty. We're going to have that high pressure system that is typically in some parts of the central or northern Atlantic, generally steering this storm to the west for the time being. 
this storm will not really have the ability to curve north until about right here and that's when the path then widens for this thing to go on at this point if you're zoning out just tune back in especially for these next couple of minutes this is where i'm going to go a little bit slower and kind of break things down look at what's going on on these individual models that blend into this larger scale piece of guidance we've got a model that goes into this ensemble system taking this thing east of bermuda we've got some then stretching this strengthening possibly hurricane as far southwest as skirting the caribbean islands as we go out of saturday and into sunday and monday this is a thousand plus miles of where this storm could be no a real deal agreement is going on between any of these individual plots. We don't see a huge clustering of plots going on in any one zone within that line that I just drew. That tells me the atmospheric steering currents and the surface pressure systems that are going to be in place in this part of the Atlantic around August 17th, August 18th are uncertain and there's discrepancies in exactly where those are going to be among these individual models. That's why they show the plots going all over the place. The one thing I can tell you with certainty, though, is that there is going to be a storm moving west or northwest somewhere out here in the western Atlantic by the time we go into the early part of next week. That storm is probably going to be strong. If you look closer at these individual plots, that one has some greens and then a blue center. We've got lots of blue centers going on through here. Blue indicates individual runs that are showing pressure as low as around 960, even 959, 40 millibars. That is a very low pressure system. In many cases, we're seeing Cat 3, Cat 4 hurricanes that have that kind of low pressure. Whatever we have in the Western Atlantic is going to be strong, I can tell you that. It's just a matter of where this goes that really determines impact potential to the United States. And of course, what's making all these changes in the first place is exactly where weather systems that are already going to be out here are going to be positioned. As we go towards Tuesday, August 19th into Wednesday, August 20th, we got some models carrying a fish storm out to sea. We've got some carrying a 940 millibar hurricane right up the east coast. Again, there's a lot of discrepancies. Don't let anybody tell you this is barreling into the USA for sure. Don't let anybody tell you this thing is a definite out to sea. These plots really indicate that, and that's why I wanted to spend so much time just showing you these. The last thing I want to do to kind of show you the discrepancies here is actually show you the difference between the main European model and the main GFS model. These are the steering currents and then the position of our hurricane. We're looking specifically at the lower level jet stream currents. You can see a gap in currents right in the middle of the Atlantic as we go to the end of this week. There's your high pressure system. There's your area of lower pressure and some stronger flow riding over top of that in particular. Notice what's going on. We've got kind of a dip in the jet stream coming off the east coast of the U.S. And this thing is going to race east. You can see that movement going on across the Atlantic. It overall disintegrates. Our strongest energy associated with that is going to be riding north of the high pressure system, according to the Euro, by Saturday. That puts this system in a position where it's got a wide open shot the path of least resistance would be going right towards the east coast of the United States. Is that exactly the track that we see out of this latest European model? Yeah, it is. That's the path of least resistance. We get this storm coming up as a monster hurricane very near the east coast of the USA before it could possibly even start to curve. That's a very concerning sign that we have that showing up on some of our leading guidance, of course. If we pivot over now, starting at the same time with the GFS model, you can see around Friday morning, there's your high pressure system, a little weaker and a little further north. So this storm is already curling north to an extent. And then watch what happens with that general dip in the jet stream coming off the east coast of the U.S. It lags behind a little bit longer, and the energy is actually a little bit stronger, kind of blocking the path towards uh, the east coast that the european model had shown so watch what that ends up doing to this low pressure center in this case here you go the jet stream energy and the flow of the high pressure system are too much for your low it tries to kind of make the westward push but it never really can from there and we see this thing curling out and becoming a fish storm it's literally the minute details like with a trough in the jet stream that create the uncertainties with this system and I think we're going to continue to have uncertainties over the next several days regarding exactly how this thing might track. Let's now recap what I discussed over the last 10 minutes or so. Of course, headline number one, Tropical Storm, eventually Hurricane Aaron, is very likely to form within the next seven days. Track certainty is high to even what I'd consider very high through Saturday. The storm should shade north of the Caribbean. 
Minute details will affect track from Saturday onward. This storm has the potential to be a Cat 2 to Cat 4. It's just where does this go once we get beyond the weekend? That's what's really in question. It could be a fish storm. It could move west towards the east coast. Right now, that's why I've got the USA East Coast impact potential, in my opinion, at about 50-50. One thing that is a very low chance, though, is this thing going into the Gulf of America. That is a low chance right now. With that being said, that is all I have in terms of new info that I want to provide about future Hurricane Aaron, as it is expected to be. Of course, I'll keep you updated with more videos in the future. That will include, likely, some videos that have updates on the general USA weather pattern. I covered that in the last video. I'll link that down in the description if you want to check it out. But for now, that's it with this one. See you next time. God bless. One Nation Web.